You're listening to Truth Talk, Real People, Real Talk, a dive into the spiritual journeys of our church community. Each episode features open and honest conversations with members as they share their insights, challenges, and triumphs in their faith walks. From Sunday school studies to personal devotions, we explore the rich tapestry of learning and growth happening within our congregation. Discover inspiration, encouragement, and a deeper connection to your faith community. Hello and welcome to Truth Talk, Real People, Real Talk. And my name's Garrett. I'm Kayla. I'm Tanya. And I'm Mandy. And we are back again to talk about the Ark Encounter this time. So, we, um, for those who maybe didn't tune in to last episode or hear our last episode, we talked about our church trip to the Creation Museum and at the same time, we went right on down the road a little farther and went to the Ark Encounter. So, um, first impressions, we'll start with Tanya and I this time, since we started with Garrett and Kayla last time. First impressions at the Ark Encounter. Once again, how different. Yep. I mean, you would think, how can a giant Ark be very different? But things were so different around that whole well, place. there was only the ark last time. Yes, there was only the parking the ark. lot was different. We drove yes. up and we're like the parking lot wasn't like this before. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Creatures of habit. <laughs> <laughs> the one time before we've been. Yes. So. This is so different. <laughs> We had to walk, like, our bus where we parked before, like, we got bussed up, you know, we got bussed yeah. up to the entrance this time. Before where we parked, you had to walk up to the entrance, like, it wasn't as far away. Yeah. Thank time. goodness for the bus. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But you did, but you had to walk up there, so you that was... Did. that was, was different. Um, it, but was it was literally only the Ark last time. There was it, nothing else yeah, but the Ark. We're not joking when we say that. That is all there was. <laughs> there was no landscaping, really. No. Nothing. Because had it just opened yes, when y'all went. it had just opened. Yeah, because like, you know, there now they have all these other things like, uh, you know, like they're moving the animals, mm-hmm. like the camels. and All of that was at the Creation Museum when we went the last time. So, you know, now it's all there. And um, it was just, it's still beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's more beautiful now because it has changed and it's kind of, more settled in, mm-hmm. and, you know, it's it's like that's its home now, but still massive. Oh, my goodness. I loved the <laughs> rainbow entrance. Yes. Yes. Just seeing that, that was beautiful. Yes. That's my, that was probably my favorite, like, visual. And that they, and yes. being able where we stood to take our picture in front right. of the ark. Yes. And, and you kids. can have the ark in the background. Yeah. The kids say, hey, there's God's promise. And that's right. There's a rainbow. Mm-hmm. I mean, immediately. Reclaiming, reclaiming the rainbow. We need yes. to start a movement. Yes. <laughs> That's right. So for those of you who had never been before, first impressions at the Ark Encounter? I mean, just the, de- again, the detail. I mean, seeing it in that, I mean, seeing the size of it, mm-hmm. obviously. I mean, that just, you know, it blows your mind to think that that's really how big it was. Mm-hmm. I mean, it it is built to the specifications of the Bible. Mm-hmm. I mean, that just, I mean, I don't really know if there's much you can say walking up to it because you're like, wow. Mm -hmm. That's a big old boat. That's a big old (laughs) boat. It's not, it's definitely not a Jaws moment. When you have to go, you're going to need a bigger boat. It's kind of like. That's as big um, as you can get. I kind of hear Crocodile Dundee, you know, (laughs) instead of a knife, though, we're talking about a boat. That's right. You you call that a boat? This This is is a boat. boat. (laughs) When you walk up to it and you just look up in amazement, really, and this was done, I mean, before what we know now as, you know, we have man lifts and all this mechanical mechanical engineered stuff that we use to to build stuff of that size they were doing this noah did this in biblical times with his hands i mean yeah. and he had help but come on that's that's a massive no task lift no what no and on faith mm-hmm. like i was you know 
told to build this boat or, you know, it's been put on me to build this boat and people think he's crazy and he's For building why? a boat. They hadn't seen, they had not seen rain. There was no such thing as rain yet. No. Yeah. You yeah. know, the, the earth was watered by the mists, right? Still. So there's really no rain yet. So why would you need a boat? What, what is a boat? Yeah, like, <laughs> like what? Yeah. What is that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's built this thing that you know the ark is five hundred and ten feet long, and of course the Bible uses the measurements and cubits, and I mean, it's a it's amazing the engineering that was used in that time. What's that tell you? Mm-hmm. God had His hand in it. Mm-hmm. He knew what He was doing. He's never wrong. And there's there's some magnificent things in this in this boat, and then it's a miracle. Yeah, I mean right. that he provided the type of material Noah needed in the way that he needed because it's the first structure of its type. So Noah had to be blessed with the knowledge to be able to to use the resources God had given him as well. So. And even go into the detail of um, using pitch to seal the boat. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's, you built the boat. Now let's seal the boat. Mm-hmm. We can't leave that out. So it's watertight. Right. <laughs> what tight? You know, yeah. it's just like, <laughs> because why? You know, it is. It's just amazing. And all, the detail that goes into it to account for all the animals that it's going to have to house. Like I had never in my, I knew the depictions that I had in my mind of the ark were never fully accurate because I just couldn't envision it, you know, but I had never in my wildest imaginations envisioned how it's laid out in the ark, the different levels the different housing structures, the different how it's how they would stable animals, the water troughing systems, yes, that was the cool. feeding systems, all the vesseling, you know, and everything to co- both to collect water and store water and to store grain and all these thought we're having having the horticulture area on top, yes. you know, and everything just he invented the raised beds, yeah. <laughs> yes, <Literally>. exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's not a new thing. <laughs> the, the ventilation system. Yeah. Um, yeah. how they got rid of waste. Mm-hmm. Very important. Um, I mean, there's, you know, you're you're on this thing, and uh, you have all these animals that need the food that that have the waste, and hey, we got that handled. There's a way to do yeah. that. It's just and it's it, engineering masterpiece Mm -hmm. definitely it's just it's just mind-boggling when you walk through it i will say much not much in the ark itself had changed i did not notice too much they've enhanced a couple yeah of the areas um i think they had added to the the ark arcs from around the world display i don't remember being it that as big as it was yeah but um i mean it's so I mean, you, I think when you go in there, you it has been built so that you see, for the most part, what it would have looked mm-hmm. like. So how do you enhance that right. much more? I That's mean, right. it's massive enough, just that alone. Mm-hmm. You know, having to, like, you look at everything. Because from the first time we went to this time, um, I, I did it focus so much um the first time on all the the other stuff Mm -hmm. like how did they get waste out or Mm -hmm. how did they do you know all these minute things it was just the you know just seeing the basic stuff Mm -hmm. like how they stored the animals Mm -hmm. and took care of the animals you know so even though it didn't change much I still saw a lot more yeah like you know it's like it's almost like you're peeling back layers when you go back and we were wrong. We just spoke wrong. There <gasps> was more there than Ark. Esmeralda's kitchen was there because we did eat lunch there. We did. We I did forgot. eat at Esmeralda's just, kitchen. <laughs> I just remember. Because I was like, wait a minute. Because the, the girls sang with that group yes. last time. Yes. Can't forget the food. I know. Which was great. I mean, realistically, it's 
pretty good. <laughs> but um, I was, it just came to me. I need, well, we better correct ourselves before we get called out <laughs> from the podcast. Please don't call us out. <laughs> like, we're wrong. <laughs> there was one other thing there besides yes. the art. It was the, the food area was there. Um, but yeah, I didn't get as uh, I was astounded by how much more had been added outside though. I mean the zoo, the um the um what's it called the center, the education center, um the three D um theater. Oh that was four D cool. theater. Yes. That was awesome. Which I did not get to go to because I was watching the Ken Ham presentation. So I did miss that. But that whole piece I was not there before. Um the, they had all a the outdoor mm-hmm. All the outdoor experiences you can do now, the zip line course, which... You stayed on that for a while, didn't it you? It took us a, a little bit over an hour to do that. Let me tell you. Yeah. Not for the faint of heart. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, Mike, you got to love somebody to do that, to jump off a perfectly good platform. <laughs> it is really cool, though, because on your way back, you go over the arc. On the if you do not the baby one but the next one up, um, and you come back and you you zip line back over the arc, and so you you see it coming back across, and so it was it was pretty cool to see. If I wouldn't if I'd opened my eyes, I'd have probably seen a lot more. <laughs> but I was just holding off, dear life. That does help. <laughs> but um, the things you do for the for, ones for you the love. Children. <laughs> but um. But Bailey better surely appreciate the fact that I took it for the team. But um, but just it, it really is an experience that you can spend a day or two at. Like if you if you are looking for somewhere biblically oriented, family friendly that you can have a vacation at, you really could spend a couple of days doing everything at the ark and a, and another day or so at the Creation Museum, especially when the Creation Museum gets their their horticulture and their greenhouses and all that up and going. You and then the art completes mm-hmm. the um their the, Jerusalem, yes. Jerusalem, because yeah. they're building yes. that uh, Jerusalem at, at Jesus's time um, area. That's going to be amazing. We're just going to have to go back and of a course years when they get done. That's right. With it, cause it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Okay, so what was your favorite exhibit or feature at the Ark Encounter? So mine probably was um, just the the architect architectural uh, part of it. I mean this this thing is amazing. You walk through, you see the these trees. I mean they're huge, and how they uh did this in biblical times well they did it of course because god was with them and god gave them the knowledge to do this but you walk in and you look up and i mean it's it's wild but seeing the way that they created how to get rid of the waste how to create the ventilation system um that stuff intrigued me of how they did it and how everything fits I mean, everything fits. Just what God wanted on that boat was on that boat. And how Noah had the faith to go through and do it. I like to look into it like you could get up to the top and you could look through like all the joists, you know, and everything and and see like down to the different levels. I was trying to find. They can't see it because... We're and happy. even so, if you could see it, we, see it. we <laughs> love imagine. We love the art, and I love the art and seeing it. But we hung around, and there was a concert. Mm. Oh, and yeah. let me tell you, the concert was amazing. And um, did they not do that the last time y'all were there? Did no. they not have no. any? This completely not. I mean, this group. We need to bring them to Antioch. I'm working on it. Me and Dale are going to be know. working on it. But we had go, church there. But to go not expecting to experience that. And then, you know, some you know, some of the kids were with us and them getting to experience that. Yes. I mean, it just Oh yeah. It it was it was not what I was expecting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, the concert the concert w- was awesome. It was like 
it was like the cherry on top. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like God said, here, let me give you a little bit of, you know, this, this right. experience. And it was, I mean, and it wasn't some short little no, thing, you know, it was, like, yeah. it, was a, it was a long program and, um, and, um, I mean, yeah, it good. was a, it was a very emotional mm. time yes. for me. Um, you know, this trip, this whole trip was an emotional time for me. It's my, um, it was my first time getting out really and going by myself after losing my mom. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I needed this, but that was just God saying, you know, you came and here, let me give you this. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was good. Uh, it none was of good. us really expected. I don't think we knew what to expect no. with that. Mm -hmm. And then I think well, we, we all wouldn't have just... even gone the second day, but Kevin, our bus driver, had gone. He he's been to the Creation Museum in Ark so many times, but he had gone to the concert at the Creation Museum the day before. So he had they had been mm -hmm. at the Creation Museum apparently the day before. Which I can't ever figure out where they were at the Creation Museum. My there is a big yeah. auditorium to the right as you walk, like where the food court is. Uh -huh. It was yeah, yeah, in yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. So he had been, he's like, y'all, they said they're going to be there at the ARC tomorrow. Y'all need to go to that. And so he, it, so at supper that night, he told us about it. And because um, we went to Texas Roadhouse. Yeah. Probably <laughs> like the best meal down. we had the entire time. It, it was good. It, it wasn't big boys. <laughs> <laughs> But um, <laughs> highly do not recommend big boys. <laughs> ten out of ten do not recommend. Didn't but somebody have a birthday? Oh. <laughs> like, but I will say this: had we not ate at Big Boys, we would not have seen the, the beautiful rainbow On Wednesday night. There the was the double, the double, the rainbow. The double rainbow. That was one of the most beautiful rainbows mm -hmm. I think I've ever seen, yeah. and we would not have seen That's it right. had we not been at Big Boys. At Big Boys. <laughs> That's about the only thing that redeemed that night. <laughs> <laughs> that big voice. <laughs> so, but um, we digress. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I and Tanya really, she just went because she wanted to bring with me again because we're tra we're travel buddies. And we so are travel went. buddies. I really um, one thing that I think was new, or I just didn't see it before. And maybe it's because we're studying Genesis right now in my Sunday school, our Sunday school class, was this t the Twelve Stones monument outside of the Ark when you're walking up to the Ark, and it's like the monument, and I've got I'm reading it here because I, I have a picture that? of it. I, I think we missed I think it. We missed yeah, that. I missed that. that. It's right outside. It's like right when you're walking up to the Ark, like to walk, wiggle your way around to the entrance. Yes. It's right before you walk up underneath the Ark to get into the queue. So, um. We missed that, Tanya. I think we missed it because we were looking up. Yes. At the ark. Right. Um, <laughs> it says, after miraculously enabling the Israelites to cross the Jordan River on dry ground, God told Joshua to have a representative from each of the 12 tribes take a stone from the river. The Lord instructed them to build a memorial with those 12 stones as a reminder to the coming generations of what God had done for them. And so at the ark, they took 12 stones. The board of directors each took 12 stones uh, when they when they were able to um, break ground, so as a monument to what God had called them to do here at the Ark Encounter and everything, and I thought I think that's something maybe um, these that we've kind of gotten away from because we we've, we've become so anti. We don't want anything to become an idol. Yeah, but you know, all throughout biblical history, especially in Genesis, they are establishing an altar. They are putting a monument to God. They are somehow dedicating that land to God. You read Genesis and you read Abraham as he travels through what will eventually become the promised land. He's always setting up an altar or a monument or something and declaring this God's. And what it does is as the children of Israel or come back into the land after their Egyptian exile, they find these monuments and their testimonies to them of how faithful God promised this 2000 years ago. And here he is faithful to, to prove his promises is true. So I think, you know, we as modern day believers, 
you know, we need to do something about having this living testimony that we that we have a monument, whether it's a physical monument or something we pass down. That's why I take notes in my Bible. You know, my Bible's all marked up and everything. And like one day I want to be able to give it to Bailey or whomever and that it's it's something that's a physical physical testimony of what my time spent with the Lord meant, you know, and that kind of thing. And I, that monument really, I, was, I really got like moved by seeing those 12 stones stacked up right there. I thought the door was pretty cool, mm-hmm. how they put emphasis on the door. Mm-hmm. Um, how massive it is. How massive the door is. And I mean, it goes to John ten nine. I am the door. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Um, so we all take a picture at this door, but then you sit there and you think this door is the door mm. and there's an open door. Mm. You just got to accept to walk through the door. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's, that's what, um, what's the simple, but so hard. For people to, especially for the non-believer. And it's free. Yeah. I mean, you might have to change your way of living, but it's free. Mm-hmm. If he and can save me, he can save anybody. You got to sacrifice. You got to give up. But that's what it says, why it says you have to die. You know, you have to, you have to die to yourself. You have to be willing to realize that there is nothing. See, we want to fool ourselves and think that we're good people. I don't do anything bad. I don't do anything wrong. Okay. Compared to these people you live next door to, maybe. But when you compare yourself to God, you are horribly unredeemable, except unless you accept Jesus. You know, there's only one thing that can make you once again in right relationship, and that is if you take on the blood of Jesus because his perfect life lets you live in harmony. And I think that's that's what's so hard for the regular person. We want to fool ourselves thinking that we're good. And that we're okay because comparatively to our culture, yeah, I mean, we're halfway mm-hmm. decent people, but we can't compare ourselves to the culture. That's why God calls us to be set apart. And you don't have to say it. You just have to think it. If you think something, I mean, you know how our minds are. Mm-hmm. Um, what goes through your mind? I mean, there's bad thoughts. Mm-hmm. And you you got to, you got to walk through the door mm-hmm. because uh, we're bad. We're yeah. bad creatures. Mm-hmm. Prone to wandering. I'll tell you another thing I really enjoy, and and I always like looking at it. And I'm so glad that we had to take kids so that they can see it. Are the different representations of the ark, um, the the display, but the portion that says it's not a fairy tale. Yeah, and right, we do so much in our children's Bibles and in our Sunday school literature. So much of the ark story is depicted in a very cartoonish way. And even adults never move past this kind of fairy tale interpretation to what it really looked like. And it's so important that you move past that, that you spiritually mature past that mindset because these are this account is so important to understand that if you can't get past the, the cartoon images you will never grow like you should as a mature Christian. I mean, to me, you know, the ark is, um, it's, it's the, it's such a great example of new beginnings, Mm -hmm. which is what Christianity is about. Mm -hmm. You know, like you, you die to self, you put away that, that old dirty, you know, fleshy body of yours put it away and you take on this new this new body and um you know that is i mean Mm -hmm. you know the the times when this boat was being built was not good Mm -hmm. and um it's hard to imagine how it could be worse than some of the stuff that's going on now Mm -hmm. um i mean to think if if that this could be us. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, because things are really that bad. But to know that it was so bad that this this had to be done, Mm -hmm. you know. But to to be able to go through it 
and survive it and then knowing them to come out on the other side. It's definitely and, a, the Old Testament foreshadowing of the redemption of the cross because you have God sealing that door shut, you know, and yeah. he's like, just like he seals that grave shut, you know, and, and he only God can open that door back up. They, no one in his family are sealed in that ark. They're saved until God lets them out, you know, and just like we are saved because God allowed himself to be in the form of Jesus, be sealed in that tomb. But the power that Jesus has over death is what allows us to be saved, you know, and everything. So it's definitely that Old Testament representation of the foreshadowing of what was to come, you know, uh, through the life of Christ. So it's, it's powerful and you need to see that you, but you've got to get out of fairy tale land. Yes. For that really to sink in. To, to Because if you don't see that that boat sealed up, if you just see that giraffe neck sticking out of that, <laughs> you know, that port the window elephant, the elephant, and everything. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> and it, that boat was sealed up. There wasn't no water getting in that boat. There were not, no. there were not animals sticking their heads out the window, you know. They were, they were locked <laughs> up. They were locked up. <laughs> they were there was in. one window at the top of the boat that Noah sent a bird out of. Right? A yep. dove. Yeah. Right. A right. Dove? Yeah. So there's one window. And I imagine it's like a hatch more so than a window, right? That he could just open up and release. Because if not, you, the floodwaters are going to overtake and everything. Yeah. So, I mean, we've got to get out of that mindset of of the fairy tale images. Yeah. That's what, that's really what. That always drives home with me at the ark. Yeah. Well, I, and go ahead. Sorry. No, you go well, ahead. Then they had the exhibit of all the the children's stories. Yes. Like every depiction that is out there, mm-hmm. it was almost almost looked like a library. Yes. Of yeah. all the yes. books on display, and I mean that is our what when we think of the ark. A lot of times, that's what people's that's what you go to mm-hmm. is yes. is the children's stories. Mm-hmm. And yeah. now for me. And I'm I'm sure for my kids, this is what we're gonna think about. Right, is this? That's right. Yeah, and not a children's story because it's really it's not. That's not how it is. That's right. Yeah, I mean, you know, but we have to be accepting of it, just like a child. Right. You know, I mean, it's not a child's story, mm-hmm. but you have to have that acceptance, childlike that faith. childlike faith. Which is so hard. The Mm. older you get, the harder it is. Um, What I was going to say is, um, in thinking about all of this, you know, the, I guess it was the the 3D or whatever ride, or not Mm -hmm. ride, but you know what I mean. Experience. Experience. (laughs) Kind of felt like you were on a ride. (laughs) Um, You know, my thought, I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but my thought, I hadn't thought about all these other people helping build the boat, you know, but yes, Noah was the engineer. He put it, you know, he, God gave him the, the, the specifications and told him what to do. And Noah had to do this and he had his sons, but that, you know, it brought out that he probably did hire other people Mm -hmm. to do this. Craftsmen and stuff. You know, craftsmen, people that knew mm-hmm. how to build. But, you know, it's just, uh, it's crazy that they helped, that these people would have helped build this boat. And then when it came time, I mean, they saw Noah. Mm-hmm. They saw what he was doing, the faith that he had to mm-hmm. do this. Like, you really have to believe mm-hmm. that something is about to happen. And then for nobody to get on the to get on the boat um because they could have mm-hmm. if they could have but they didn't they chose not to that is a after that is mind blowing be involved in, yes. in this and then not be able to get on it yes my mind always goes to uh, we saw that video at creation museum and it kind of alludes to it it was the creation the 7 days or whatever but it alludes to the flood Maybe it was the second one. I can't remember. But um, but 
I, we, I didn't see any videos at ARC. Um, but when the floodwaters come and people start running for the boat, you know, and they start banging on the boat, you know, and, but the doors have been sealed, you know, and so I think what that kind of, I want, that's what I want the part of the story to resonate with me. And that's the part of the story I want to resonate when I get the opportunity to teach that lesson and I get the opportunity to share, whether it's with Bailey or nieces and nephews or, or other kids that we need to live our lives in such a way that we hope we lead those people to the door while it's still open. Because I don't ever want somebody to walk, me to walk away from somebody and they're still left banging on the door, you know, because I haven't, I haven't been persuasive or, or I didn't even have the conversation. You know, I want to have the conversation because it's, it's important that, that we, that we do our best because there's eternity is in the balance for, for, for everyone, you know, for, for, for the believer, it's a great thing, you know, but for the non-believer, eternity is going to be awful and we can't even understand it. And that's anytime I've seen that video where those people are banging on, on those doors at my heart just drops because they had the opportunity. The boat was there and they just laughed at it or didn't believe or whatever. And they turned their back and it's just, it's just so heartbreaking that, that more people didn't choose and God knew they wouldn't because there wasn't room that he didn't create the room. So he knew, you know, that's, and that's something that's so hard to wrestle with, you know, God's omniscience and how he makes decisions like this. Like we were talking about Sunday night, the, which y'all weren't here, but um, middle knowledge that God, God, <laughs> God, <laughs> God creates, God exists in this middle knowledge. He's omniscient. He knows all. But he's making decisions, like his decisions, there's this middle knowledge that God has where he is, things are going according to his plan in the now because of that middle knowledge that he has of the future. You know, it's, yeah. it's just like mind blowing. But he had the ark built. Where everything fits. Where every, yes, it's just, you know, Bailey was sitting next to me and she's like, but if God knew then why did he make Adam in the first place? And I was like, because it was his decision. You know, I was like, that's a good question for daddy. You know, <laughs> I do not have the answer. Ask daddy. I probably can't explain it to you in a way that is going to sit well with you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> But that shows that he has a much bigger plan. That's right. Than what we can even imagine. Mm-hmm. And, and we, and we won't, and we won't ever know it all. Like we won't, even when we get to heaven, cause I hate, I hate it when we end up talking in groups and they're like, well, when we get to heaven, we'll find out. No. But I think at that point, and I've said this to Garrett, we have all these questions, these earthly questions. Mm-hmm. When we get there, it's not going to matter. matter. Yeah. When we get there, we're going to have our answer because mm-hmm. we're going to be standing in the yeah. presence of Jesus. Well, for one thing, all this human stuff is, isn't right. doesn't make a difference. We are, we will then be reacting in the, our full purpose, which is to bring glory and honor to God. But I think we just get so hung up on our questions and we really just need to not, not, not get, not, don't get hung up on it. Right. You know, it, because it's not going to matter. Right. And And it's not going to be for us to understand. Right. Well, and that's, um, I think some people have so too many questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, it goes back, it's, it's a it's simple. It's I mean you can't overcomplicate it, but if you ask too many questions, you do. Yeah, and that's when the weeds come and you you right. get lost in all of this. It's like and, people that want to debate the rapture. Yeah, and does it matter? No, you know, like I can't tell you. Like it's the rapture is going to happen when it's time. You yeah. can't stop it from happening. You, I can't tell you how many podcasts I listen to where they take quick questions from christians and they want to talk about the rapture i'm like it doesn't matter <laughs> it's gonna happen on god's timetable and it's it gonna comes, happen when it happens that's right. <laughs> when it comes it just comes that's right you gotta be ready 
Well, you need to be redeemed, helping. You need to be doing about going about God's business right now, which is living a life that helps bring people to the Lord. And that's our job right now that we are that we are living lives that that draw people to Jesus and leading them to the to the narrow way so that hopefully they can come in relationship with Christ. You know, I, um, you know, we will never be able to think like God. Right. But, you, you know, coming from a parent's view, you know, you, you have children and you raise them and you, you want them you know, they're going to make the choices or whatever. And I, I just, I have that feeling, you know, I'm like, does God look at us like that? Because we are his mm-hmm. children. And I think like we have hope, you know, I, it's like in the back of his head or in there, he's thinking, I hope, I hope they choose. I hope mm-hmm. they, you know, and I'm like, cause that's what mm-hmm. as a parent or just somebody, if with someone you love it doesn't have to be your child you know you're like I know what they're doing I know but I hope you know it doesn't look like they're gonna do this and even though he knows he Mm -hmm. knows the future his desire that that desire is Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. let them come let them come change their minds Mm -hmm. that's that's a good Sunday night question that is a good (laughs) Sunday night question you know Somebody that hopefully will be listening to this doesn't like me to ask questions <laughs> on Sunday nights. We will Listen. not say his name. <laughs> but, it, but it rhymes with Witchell. <laughs> Mitchell. We love I you, know Mitchell. Bailey doesn't like me saying anything. If I start raising my hand, she hits me and I'm like, I'm gonna ask my question, so you might as well say it. So. All right. So do you um was anything surprising about the arc? The virtual reality was pretty cool yeah. you get in it and it's almost real i mean yeah. it it shows you it being built and the flood coming and um mm-hmm. the detail it's all back to detail the detail that they have in this place and i'm sure they'll keep putting detail into the creation museum and the art but it's the detail mm-hmm. it's just like god put detail in everything yeah and they have not left detail out I'm, that's why i'm super excited about that jerusalem um area and yeah. like in jesus but well i won't digress i was fixing to chase a rabbit trail but i won't <laughs> i won't go there i won't i won't do that to everyone so does did i i, I we talked about this question um and to just kind of wrap up did this visit impact how you view scripture or how you interact with scripture in any way? I don't think it changed. I mean, like Tanya said earlier, it didn't change my view on it at all. In fact, it more so for me brings it to life. Mm -hmm. Like when you read it, you're now like, okay, I saw that, Mm -hmm. you know, it just, it, it just brings it all home. Mm -hmm. Garrett. (laughs) <laughs> I guess I'll follow the crew, though. Um, it brings it to life. It makes it more real life. I'm kind of a hands-on learner. Mm-hmm. Um, always have been. Uh, but it it shows you, and you can relate it back to the Bible. Hey, we saw this. Hey, this is what this looked like. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just like the building of the ark, and talking about cubics, and you look at. You can read all the numbers you want to in the Bible that tell you how long a cubit is. and But when you see it, you're like, wow, mm-hmm. check that out. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Um, it's so big. It's, it's big. <laughs> and then you think about huge. it rested on the top of a mountain. Like right. When, you know, like well, how much water, you know, that tells you how much, how much water, water it took to float it. Right. Um, to float it. It's uh. <laughs> You know, nobody, like you said earlier, nobody, that's a boat. I mean, it hadn't rained. Mm -hmm. This now, you know, you got all these animals on it and you're, you're, I mean, it, it didn't have a motor or any way to drive, but it had ways to catch the wind and Mm -hmm. it didn't go far, but still it served its purpose and it served God's purpose. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. 
Um, How far I, did it travel, do you know? Or do we know? I don't know that we know because um, there's there's an actual patterns of evidence. That's another um, organization that I follow. And he's he's got some videos out where he supposes. Uh, it's called Journey to Mount Sinai. And um, where he thinks that some stuff ends up. And it's, I mean, it's pretty good ways. Like, so you're thinking um, from, say, the Turkey area down to, like, where um, Africa connects with Israel um, in that area. is They're thinking that's about the distance that it would have moved. Right, and this wind drift, and mm-hmm. I mean, but it wasn't like they motorized. He right. sealed up in a box and right. or sealed up in the boat. And I think I said box because you read, you read in the book, and it says, "Was the boat shaped like a box?" No, yeah. it wasn't. <laughs> okay, in my book, um, it says on the seventeenth day of the seventh month in Noah's six hundredth year, the ark comes to rest on one of the newly formed mountains in the region of Ararat. Mm-hmm. So, yep, that's one of the things that they've said they've not, which you wouldn't be able to find that, like anything left. I mean, it's been thousands of years yeah. so you wouldn't be able to find any wood or anything left from that time they've been looking and but they've been looking so well i'll have to find that video and send and see if i can find it and send it to you but so something else that i, for, I wasn't even thinking about this um i know we're trying to wrap it up it's okay but the <laughs> we don't there, have any commercial breaks or anything so we can go as long as we want to keep on going there was one thing on there like when the flood it showed a visual of when the flood came how the saltwater animals and the freshwater animals were kept separate from mm-hmm. each other. And I, you know, you didn't, I never really thought about mm-hmm. that until we went through there mm-hmm. that they were kept separate, mm-hmm. you know, while the flood yeah, was there. Right. Were, there were um, like specific areas of the water mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. stayed fresh and there was salty water in other areas. So mm-hmm. that is cool because that just doesn't happen. Not yeah, normally, right. yeah. I mean, not for all. Just not for all. God is water intentional, animals. right? Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So, I I think one thing that um, after listening to Ken Ham talk and all, I think just like y'all are studying Genesis, I, I mean, I think that's something that was kind of brought back to me, like you know. It would probably probably be a good idea for mm-hmm. me to go back and just, I mean, you know, I think sometimes we forget about mm-hmm. Genesis because mm-hmm. it is the first book and it's like. So many of our stories come, come from Genesis. Come from there. And so, you know. You think once, you know it all. Yeah. Well, and especially after, after you leave the, your, your younger years, because mm-hmm. really um, when I, you know, when I was teaching younger kids in, in Sunday school, these were the stories you taught. Mm-hmm, that's right. These are the stories mm-hmm. that, I mean, every year it would be the same stories. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you grow up and all of a sudden, oh, I don't need those stories anymore. Mm-hmm. But but you do. Yeah. I believe, you really do. I believe that our pastor said, if the Lord tarries, when we get done with John, he's going to Genesis, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. There we go. He said that. The, Sounds good. Another cool thing is when you're walking in the <laughs> ark, I think it was on the Breaking f- third floor. Um, it shows you all the toys from around the country and, and the world. It shows you toys of the ark and Noah mm-hmm. from all around the world. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just cool to see all those different mm-hmm. toys that they all say the same thing. Right. They're a little bit different, Yeah. but right. they all say the same thing. Mm-hmm. They're all the same toys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are not the same toys. They're they look arc, a li- they're arc replicas, yeah, but they look very similar. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, my for me, I'm very similar to y'all. It just really deepens my desire to study and understand and 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 have a and and really want the Lord to reveal Scripture to me. So that I can interact with it, and so that I understand it, so I can explain it, so that so that I can be a good source of truth. Um, one thing I try to, you know, the Bible is I try any class that I teach, the Bible is our source of truth, 
there are a lot of things out there competing um, with us for knowledge to say, oh, this is true. We'll live your truth. No, you don't. There's no such thing. You do. You. There is one, yeah. <laughs> there's one source of truth, and that is God's word, you know. And so it, anytime we do something like that, it just gives me a greater desire to study my Bible, to understand my Bible so that I can reason with people as to why I believe this book and why it's my source of truth and why I'm so convicted about my beliefs and why I can trust God and his word. And, and that's what the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter has done for me to just really give me that foundation and that confidence that I can say, well, I mean, that's fine if you disagree with me, but you're not going to change my mind and you're not going to interrupt my belief. And, and, and I'm firm on what I believe, you know, and I, and I can, and I can point to these scriptural resources and, and, and know and, and tell you why I believe that. And you're not gonna be able to shake that from me, you know, and I think that's important for us as Christians, especially in a, in an era where, you know, up until 20, 30 years ago, Christians were very respected and their beliefs were respected, but we live in a time now where Christianity is mocked. Um, back very. in the nineties with, you know, Dawkins and Hawking and um, Dawkins and Hawkins and I can, all these, all these people in the humanist movement and the, and everything, they started this, this concept of making fun of Christianity and, and it's become where it's not respected. And so we need to be able to stand firm and we need to be able to say, well, it's true whether you believe it or not and be able to give a defense. That's what apologetics is for is to be able to give a defense for the truth that we believe. And, and I think that's what information like this does for us. Yeah. I know, um, I know it's been said a lot in our discussion about details. Mm-hmm. Garrett has said a lot about details, <laughs> but um, you know, my thoughts has all my thought always goes back to the human body mm-hmm. and how detailed it is, mm-hmm. how everything in the human body works together to get blood here and you know to everything functions mm-hmm. in a specific way, and to think that there are people out there who think that we just came from whatever Mm -hmm. you know but there had to be a creator right there had to be a designer Mm -hmm. that you don't look at a house and think that house just showed up there no right you know somebody built that house and and that was one of the things Mm -hmm. that ken ham brought out Mm -hmm. you know like things don't just form themselves Mm -hmm. i mean yeah like um dirt and from the ocean may come up and form a hill, but it doesn't build a house. Right. You know, and it's the same way with our bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much Mm -hmm. details that it couldn't have just happened. That's right. And there's so much that science can't explain Mm -hmm. about how stuff works either. But I think when you go to places like this, it kind of helps explain that a little Mm -hmm. bit more. Mm -hmm. It just... But I just don't understand how people can look and not not see that there had to be a creator. Right. Well, that kind of goes back to the fearfully and wonderfully made mm-hmm. exhibit because yes. we are all fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. And man's heart, you know, is once it's pride. You know, it's been the problem. It's what did what did Eve Eve wanted to? God said, "Do not eat of this." But the servant said, "Did God really?" And in her desire to do what she wanted to do and make her own way and make her own choice, she did not listen to the voice of God. She listened to her own self. And that's what man does, you know, and, and that's what that's where all that comes from is instead of listening, just like Romans one, God will give us over to our flesh if we refuse to listen to him. So, I mean, that's that is the. That is the, what we have as Christian, that is what we have to struggle against. All right. Well, we're getting the wrap it up sign from Dale <laughs> since he's in charge of us. Thanks, Dale. <laughs> so, <laughs> this has been a great discussion. Thank you all, Tanya, 
Carla. That's the inside joke. <laughs> Kayla and Garrett. <laughs> Shout out, Mackenzie. <laughs> Uh, for joining us for this episode of Truth Talk, Real People, Real Talk. We look forward to next time. This has been Truth Talk, Real People, Real Talk, brought to you by Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in Sylvester, Georgia. We hope you join us for our next episode.